Hello everyone and welcome to our incredible match, the 1858 match between Johan Jakob Leventhal and Paul Charles Morphy. Uh, this is game uh, 14, uh, I believe this is game 14, let me just check one more time, uh, as it might not be, uh, but I'm pretty sure it is, no, it's uh, it's game 13, and uh, we've seen game 12, it was really crazy, uh, but this game features, uh, like the title suggests, one of the worst moves ever played in chess history, and I know the competition is steep, uh, there's, uh, well, just by missing mate in one, we have Ivanchuk, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk versus Anand, we have uh, uh, Karpov Barev, we have uh, Kramnik missing mate in one against Deep Fritz, so th the competition is fierce, but uh, those were all games uh, played in extreme pressure, uh, not, not just time-wise, uh, ex extreme time pressure and th the games uh, were extremely important. So here, this is a game uh, without a clock and, you know, you can take as much as you want for a move like uh, okay you can't take forever because it's gonna be rude but other than that you're not breaking any rules so I definitely think this game uh, deserves to be uh, among those games if not above them but you'll see what I mean by this so uh, let's check it out uh, Loventhal with the white pieces uh, tries to get back into the match he plays e4 uh, we have e5 by Morphe, knight f3, knight to f6, and now knight captures on e5. So uh, a normal Petrov defense, nothing out of the ordinary here, the classical variation. d6, kicking back the knight, knight f3, and knight captures on e4 now. We have d4 and d5. This is still uh, standard theory uh, uh, even today in 2020. We have bishop to d3 and bishop to e7. Both players prepare the castle. Uh, we have castles and now knight to c6. And of course c4, putting pressure on d5. Uh, and here, uh, this is uh, up until this point, uh, even though the game was played in 1858, this is still top uh, top theory, played in 2020, approved by Deep Fritz, approved by uh, Lila Chess Zero, approved by pretty much, uh, pretty much everyone. Uh, and here, today we would see a knight to b4 this is the go-to move uh, however in those days bishop to e6 was the was the idea just add a defender here so here we have c captures on d5 by Lowenthal, Morphe recaptures and knight to c3. He goes after the bishop, uh, knight captures on c3, b captures and here Morphe just castles. And here we have bishop to f4 and it was uh, uh, at this position from move 12 that uh, this position has never been reached again. So let's let's see what happens here. Uh, we have bishop to d6, Morphe offers a trade uh, and uh, Lowenthal obliges. We have captures, captures, Morphe gets a free uh, developing move for his queen uh, and knight to g5 already threatening a pawn here on h7 so Morphy has to decide how to deal with this either either he will play h6 or f5 f5 being more aggressive uh, Morphy of course uh, chooses the the latter option so here we have c4 uh, pushing the bishop back uh, and here Morphy doesn't like retreating with the bishop uh, because uh, well it's just not pleasant. If you go here, you, you're you just going to face a double attack on, on the bishop and on the knight. And if you go all the way here, then the rook no longer uh, guards the f5 pawn. You can just pick it up. So here, Morphy plays the only good move, and that is bishop captures on g2. Uh, so a temporary piece sacrifice because you're going to pin the knight and win the piece back. That's not a problem. So king captures on g2 and queen to g6. Now Morphe says, okay, now my pawn is nicely defended. I don't mind d5. The knight will come into the game and I'm going to win back my piece uh, after playing h6. So here we have f4 defending for the moment and h6 as planned. Uh, we have d5 going after the knight and here... Uh, well, you could go knight to d4, and you probably should. Uh, Morphy decides to go back with knight to d8. He probably has some plans of going to uh, to f7, and then maybe to d6, and then from there to e4, and, and who knows what. However, we have h4 by Loventhal, now with a double defensive uh, pawn move on the knight, and here Morphy recaptures the knight. We have captures, captures, and only now knight to f7. So here uh, the pawn is pinned, so Morphy is actually planning knight to h6 and then to g4 uh, but there's a problem here we have queen to f3 by Loventhal and now knight to h6 of course the knight cannot be captured but uh, problem is uh, Loventhal just ignores him with queen to g3 and now the problem is you cannot continue with your plan because just queen captures here and after captures the queen on g6 is undefended so here Morphy retreats back with the knight as now uh, of course uh, the, the pawn is no longer pinned you can simply capture it so knight back to f7 
and now c5 preparing to, to to push those pawns to create a pass pawn of course you still need moves like rook to d1 bishop c4 and then d6 uh, but uh, Loventhal has something very very nicely planned out for Morphe so rook a to d8 now threatening to win the d pawn and bishop to c4 defending now of course any c6 ideas or something like that will be met with d6 however Morphe finds the very interesting b5 saying okay uh, you either capture and then I can finally capture on d5. You can also capture Al Passant, uh, and then, uh, well, I'm just gonna recapture uh, with with either pawns. It's gonna be fine. Uh, however, we have Bishop back to b3, just keeping the pressure, defending the pawn, and at some point uh, White will be ready to play something like Rook to d1, d6, and so on. So here we have a5, planning uh, a4, so the bishop will have to move, and while white can counter this with a4, uh, here we have rook a to e1. An incredible move uh, by, uh, by Lowenthal, uh, trying to create another immortal game against Morphe, it would seem, because if you continue with a4 now, uh, rook to e6 just wins the game for white, because if you move the queen, this is just winning, and of course, if you go, uh, to, let's say, h5 with the queen, then just bishop d1, and the queen is lost. Of course, you can go back to h8, but then rook h1, and that's it, the uh, uh, game's over. So after this rook a to e1, Morphe needs to figure out what to do here. So first rook f to e8. He wants to counter one of the rooks, get his king some breeding square. As you know, this is coming and you do not want your king on a light square. However, there's the problem. Rook to e6 once again. And here, here, <laughs> uh, the problem is that uh, whatever you do doesn't really work. Uh, because Morphe, after he captures on e6, and it's a must, uh, otherwise you're going to lose the queen. Uh, we have d captures now, the pawn is protected, and you cannot move the knight because, well... Uh, all the knights, uh, all the squares the knight can go to are taken, uh, except h8, but even that doesn't matter, because if you move the knight, it's check, uh, the rook uh, will fall, and e e you don't even have to capture the rook, it's actually a beautiful checkmating idea, king h7, queen h3, check, and even after queen h6, you don't capture the queen, but rather you play this with check, and now it doesn't matter, now everything wins, for example, simplest, uh, simplest way to show you, queen g6, rook h1 is checkmate, so nothing to do here, the bishop still covers the g8 square, the queen is pinned, so you cannot block with the queen, and the rook of course delivers checkmate. So after this d captures on e6 move, uh, Morphe is forced to waste a move uh, by playing king to f8 and getting his king to a dark square. So here uh, Johan Jakob uh, says, okay, thank you for the knight, e captures on f7. Uh, there were other moves, uh, you, you, you don't have to rush anything, but uh, he, he decides to grab the piece, and as well you should, I mean, it's a free piece. Uh, we have a4, and now another beautiful move, uh, not moving the bishop, but rather rook to d1, forcing a trade here. Uh, so rook captures on d1, bishop captures, and now queen to c6 check. Uh, now Morphe is down, uh, down a piece, but at least he will uh, grab the c5 pawn and maybe he can create some sort of a pawn storm here on the queen side. So here bishop to f3, blocking, and now queen captures on c5, but now g6. And now you have this uh, uh, amazing pawn uh, structure here with the uh, past f7 pawn defended. So if you allow something like queen h4 followed by queen h8 to check, it's, it's going to be over. You can queen the pawn, you can check the king. Uh, that's just it. So here, uh, here you basically resign. There's no point in continuing this game. Uh, however, uh, we wouldn't have, uh, we, we, we probably wouldn't, uh, uh, I don't know, we'd probably show it if Morphe resigned here, but we might not have. But uh, I mean, w what happens here is just uh, crazy. So here, queen to d6. Uh, Morphe says, uh, all right, uh, I'm going to reposition my queen, maybe I can start pushing the pawns here, it, it all depends basically on what white does. So here, queen to g5. Now if the queen moves, let's say you move the queen to a weir weird square, not that, but let's say you do something like this, then it's just queen to d8, uh, mate in one. So Morphe has to be very careful here, and he goes queen to d2 with check. We have king to h3, and now queen to d3. Again, guarding the, the mating square, and also threatening queen captures on f3 with check. So here, queen to h5, guarding the bishop, and also threatening just queen to h8 check, and then you can bring another queen into the game, and so on. So here, Morphe says, okay, king to e7. Now, it's still a problem, you still can't uh, go queen h8, because now it comes without check, and I'm just gonna grab your bishop. So, queen h4 check, and now king to d7. 
Morphy starts shifting his king all the way to the queen side. King to g3. Now the bishop is defended. And now, once again, uh, you are free to queen the pawn because you don't have to worry about queen captures on f3 with check. So here, queen to d6. Morphy guards the queening square. And, uh, well, now it's white to move. Uh, feel free to pause the video and win this game for white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on playing any move, any move whatsoever that doesn't blunder the g6 pawn with check, which means you can play anything. You can play king h3, and then this is nothing because you get another queen into the game. Uh, you can defend the pawn, you can play king h3, king h2, you can defend it with queen h7. Uh, really just anything works here. Works here other than giving up the pawn with check. And this is exactly what Leventhal uh, does here. He plays queen to h8. And it makes sense. You're threatening to bring another queen into the game. Also, queen to e8 is the threat of instant checkmate as the king and uh, queen and pawn prevent the king from escaping. However, he allows queen captures on g6. And this is what I meant. Uh, there are a lot of games, uh, you know, that we can say, oh no, this is the greatest blunder ever. This is the, the worst move ever played. But those are all basically modern games. Uh, yes, amongst uh, extremely strong players, but uh, they were using a clock, so there, there was always the time pressure. There's, I mean, uh, the, the pressure was much higher. Uh, but here, it's without a clock. You have all the time in the world. You, you can like win the game any way possible. You play a move like Queen H8, and Morphy says, "All right, thank you for the pawn. Queen captures on G6. This comes with check, so you will not be enjoying any." Uh, any extra queens, we have queen back to f2, and now queen captures on f7. And all of a sudden, the position is very, very unclear. It's a uh, uh, bishop and two pawns against five pawns Morphe. And, well, you, you've just uh, ruined your game. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're not feeling all that all that great. So here, Morphe's next plan is to play b4 and b3, create a pass pawn, and win the game. So, of course, a3 is played, preventing b4, and it's a, it's a pawn on a dark square. Uh, so you, the light square bishop will not be able uh, be able to defend it. Uh, however, it, it is the way to go. And trying something like b4 right away, uh, for example, a captures and a3 is is possible, but uh, uh, not uh, not not quite uh, not quite working. As white will be able to defend it, uh, because you can always hide the king behind the bishop, and uh, well, the queen can easily easily reach the pawn from from e either side of the board. So it's not it's not going to be a, uh, that big of a deal. Uh, so that that being said, uh, let's see what actually happened in the game. After a3, we have queen to e7 by Morphy. He went for the pawn this way. He wants to uh, grab even more material. Uh, however, it's very difficult to actually do it because you will hang the g7 pawn. Uh, so here we have king to g3, and now comes queen to e1 with check. Like I said, if you go for queen captures on a3, then queen captures on g7 comes with check. And yes, you have three pass pawns here but the bishop and queen will do uh will do a sufficient job at keeping the black king at bay so after king to g3 we have queen to e1 check by morphy king to g2 and now queen to d2 with check king g3 and morphy repeats queen to e1 with check uh, and it was in this position on move 44 that the game ended in a draw and uh, this uh, unbelievable unbelievable game happened where this uh uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this, where this queen to h8 move was played like here. Congratulations to everyone who played any move other than blundering the pawn uh, with check. But here, uh, queen h8 is like the absolute nightmare, the, the absolute worst move you can play. Giving up this, this is a... This is not just a trump card. This is like, this is everything, like that beautiful g and f pawn. So uh, at first I thought, uh, you know, I, as we don't show all of the games in the Morphe Saga, I, I actually thought about skipping this one. I, I already skipped it, but then I was like, no, but let's let's at least check it out. I mean, it could be some sort of a hidden gem. And it's a good thing I did because uh, I would not know about this game and how, well, how Lowenthal just ruined a brilliant game he played against Morphe. So, uh, and it's not uh, not the only one and definitely not the first one. So here, Morphy advances, uh, well, he uh, prolongs his lead. It's now 10 to 3 in the match, uh, and we will show at least one more game from the match, and then we continue further into the Morphy saga as stronger opponents are coming. 
So what do you think about uh, the game? What do you think about this move? Uh, is it like the worst move ever played? Because uh, I really think it's amongst the, the, the top three there, especially because this play, uh, this game, this entire match was played without the clock. Uh, but I don't know. Like, like I said, the competition is steep. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Marko van Kempen, uh, Uros Petrovic, Janger Selimkanov, uh, David Chesluk, and Anthony Gregg for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my uh, previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.